From early time, there were many attempts to classify living organisms. Many scientists tried to categorize all the living forms time to time, like Aristotle. He used simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs, and herbs. He also divided animals into two groups, animals with red blood and without red blood. Then Carolus Linnaeus, he introduced two kingdom classification, Planty and Animalia. This system did not distinguish between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, unicellular and multicellular, or photosynthetic like green algae and non-photosynthetic like fungi. This classification is easy to understand, but a large number of organisms did not fall into this category. Then R.H. Whitaker in 1969 introduced five kingdom classification, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Planty, and Animalia. Let's see how five kingdoms are classified. First, cell type. Monera falls under the prokaryotes, while Protista, Fungi, Planty, and Animalia are eukaryotic. Then, cell wall. Of Monera is non-cellulosic, made up of polysaccharide and amino acid. In Protista, cell wall is present in some. Fungi cell wall is made up of chitin, and plants have cellulose. That's why they are so hard or woody. Animals don't have any cell wall outside their cell membrane. Next is nuclear membrane, which is absent in case of Monera and present in other four kingdoms. Body organization of Monera and Protista kingdoms are cellular because they are mostly unicellular. And fungi, planty, animalia have tissue, organ, organ system because they are multicellular. The five kingdoms have diverse range of mode of nutrition and we can classify them by this topic too. Monera and Protista can be autotrophic means they can make their own food and heterotrophic organisms that cannot make their own food. Fungi are always heterotrophs. They grow on dead plants or animals like saprophytes and also grow on living organisms like parasite. Plants are photoautotrophs. They make their own food by photosynthesis and animals are always heterotrophs. They are dependent on plant and other animals for food like halozoic or sometimes they are saprophytes. Now we will see the kingdom Monera. They are prokaryotes with no nucleus and no cell organelles. They are made up of only one cell, so they are microorganisms. We cannot see them without help of any microscope. They occur almost everywhere, water, soil, and air. They are bacteria. They also live in extreme habitats like hot water springs, deserts, snow, and deep oceans. They are archibacteria or ancient bacteria. Bacteria are grouped under four categories based on their shape. Spherical coccus in plural cocci, rod-shaped bacillus in plural bacilli, comma-shaped vibrium in plural vibrio, and spiral spirillum in plural spirilla. Kingdom Monera is subcategorized into two different types, archibacteria and eubacteria. Let's see who are the archibacteria. They live in the most harsh or extreme habitats, so they are also called as extremophiles. When they live in extreme salted areas, they are halophiles. In hot water springs, they are thermoacidophiles. In marshy areas, they are methanogens. Methanogens are also present inside gut of cows and buffaloes and produce methane or biogas. They differ from other bacteria by having different cell wall structure. 
and this feature is responsible for their survival in extreme conditions. Next one is few bacteria. You means true. So they are true bacteria. They are also microscopic because they are also unicellular organisms. Some of them are cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. They live on the earth over three billions of years. They can able to carry out photosynthesis and produce oxygen. Oxygen concentration of atmosphere is increased because of them and allowing us to breathe and survive. Some examples of them are anabina and nostoc. Let's see some characteristics of eubacteria. They are macroscopic or single cellular. They lack its defined membrane bound nucleus, but they have a cell wall which is made up of peptidoglycan. Unlike eukaryotes, bacteria have cholesterol present in the membrane to enhance permeability properties of their membrane. Bacteria also have a plasma membrane within their cell wall. Some bacteria may have flagella for their movement, some don't have. Other bacteria may have a pili, which are small projections all over outside of their cell, used for sticking purpose to the surfaces and transferring their DNA for reproduction, mainly for conjugation. Bacteria can be subdivided into three different types by mode of nutrition. They are heterotrophs autotrophs and chemotrophs. Heterotrophs are able to absorb organic materials down in both living and dead organisms. They cannot make their own food, so they can live inside human body as a parasite. Autotrophs can make their own food by photosynthesis like green plants. They have chlorophyll and they live inside ponds, lakes and moist regions. Chemotrophs acquire their food by breaking down inorganic matter or dead organisms. Microplasma is an organism completely lack cell wall. They are the smallest living cell known and can survive without oxygen. Some of them can be pathogenic, can cause disease to us. Now we will see how a bacteria reproduce by binary fission or amitosis the simplest cell division procedure. A bacterial cell has a naked DNA or nucleoid. That is the region where the DNA belongs. And this naked DNA is freely floating on the cytoplasm covered by plasma membrane and cell wall. First, the DNA is replicated into two. Then, cell wall and plasma membrane begin to constrict and slowly separates into two new cells. So, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Like and share with your friends. And if you want to see the next part, subscribe. Next day, coming with the details of Proteasta Kingdom. Till then, bye-bye.